The Nachimoto School says it will withdraw the application for a stay of execution pending determination of the appeal by a higher court. A statement signed by Chairman of the School's Board of Governors, Osei Kwame Ajiman, said the school took this decision with other relevant stakeholders to seek the best way forward, taking into account the interests of all parties. The revised statement comes after the governing board of the Achimoto School announced its decision to appeal the ruling by the Human Rights Division of the Accra High Court, ordering it to admit to the two Rastafarian students. Well, you'll find the details of that, that, that statement from the Achimoto School withdrawing its earlier decision to, to appeal on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Indeed, the Attorney General, Godfrey Dami, has also stated that the Achimoto School will indeed admit these students as directed by the courts. But parents of the two Rastafarians denied admission uh, into Achimoto School say what is holding them from not taking the awards to school following the court ruling is a legal document from the court to the school. Now, one of the parents, that's Terry uh, Magai, further revealed that they are going to press for compensation from the school for the time their children have wasted at home. George Quainin has more. Although the court ruling has directed Achimota School to admit the student, what is holding the parents from sending the words to school is a legal document from the court to the school. We actually had wanted to go there straight away, but then we thought we should wait to get the letter from the court. Before the appeal comes, the court hasn't called anything yet, you know. So we're going to just um, take the kids to school if we get that letter, that document signed that we can take the kids to school. They have vowed to press for compensation from the school for all the time wasted. This is about human rights because it's a country that has to move forward. You know, we need to move forward. I don't think the school should have their way by just saying it's our rules. Your rules what? We are there to teach the kids. For one of the students, Tyron Magai, this fight is for his right. One guy humorously told me that in Ghana, scoring the best grades don't qualify you into a secondary school. I, I thought maybe he was just saying it, but at a second, so I think it's very true. Because look at me, for the past days now, I haven't had the chance to be in school. When my friends come back, they can talk of their past wonderful experiences in school for the first time in their life. I can only talk about court cases and how stuff were going. Meanwhile, lawyer for the student, Ghana Mati Wayo, has hinted that the court document is likely to be available on June 3, which will allow the parents to put the words in school. I will not be far from right to say that this very ampass seems not to die out anytime soon. Each and every day, there's a new twist to the development. And we are told by the Education Minister that GES will issue a statement in that regard. According to the Chairman of the Board of Governors of Achimota, I'll say Kwame Ajiman, deliberations are ongoing. And so when they are ready to speak to the press, he would engage me. And so like TV3, we always do, we'll keep an eagle eye on this very development and keep you posted with updates in our subsequent bulletins. George Quinn in TV3 News, Accra. And almost 36 hours after judgment for the two Rasta students to be admitted by Chimoto School, questions have started surfacing about the possibility of also allowing children of other religions exhibit their beliefs and practices in schools. In the following report, legal practitioners and educationists advocate for such religious groups to petition the courts to be allowed to dress, practice and physically represent their faith as they deem fit. After a two-month-long battle, the families of the two Rastafara JHS graduates have worn what is literally the liberty to be fully recognized as attending one of Ghana's topmost secondary schools like any other. Three days after the landmark judgment, however, they seem to have received some pushback from Achimota School as its board declared an intention to appeal. A reaction that somewhat seems swiftly dispelled by the education minister. I was very surprised. Uh, he cannot take that unilateral position. I'm waiting for the full briefing of the attorney general, who I commend for going to court mm -hmm. and taking a serious interest in this case. Mm -hmm. 
while Dr. Yawasei Duchum could be now sending signals about who really is in charge of the school system, an appeal could still have some contrary ramifications for the students and their families. In as much as this judgment has come, does not mean that one can act arbitrarily without recourse to local laws. When I say local laws, that's the rules of the school. So that a traditionalist who at the shrine can put on his calico, his whisk, he will hold his whisk, uh, barefooted, and other adornments that he or she could put on at the shrine does not mean in law that that person can exhibit those things in school because in school we have rules and regulations. But at the heart of this impasse is the reality that prejudices against minority groups still exist in Ghana. For example, while Rasta school kids could now be free to attend all schools across board, questions linger pertaining to, let's say, traditional religious worshippers, Buddhists, Hindus, Krishnas, among others. It will be a case-by-case -case basis. And the first test for that person or group of persons is that they need to establish that whatever they are professing is a religious belief. It's a manifestation of a religion, just like the Rastafari, just like Christianity, just like um, Hindu, Buddhism. It virtually means that, of course, religious minorities um, will have, on the basis of this um, ruling, their rights um, to enjoy the observance of certain practices that may have been restricted. According to the statistics, traditional worshippers make up 5.2% of Ghana's religious population. 5.2% more have no affiliations and the rest are other practitioners making under 1%. Invariably, children of these identifiable groups have rights as well. For education, it's these need to be adequately looked at to ensure equity. We shouldn't see this as a new law. No new law is being made. It is just that constitutional provisions on the right to the freedom of religion and, and, and culture um, had been constricted for years, you know, by rules and regulations which are more or less inferior um, legislations. In Ghana, courts uh, look at cases based on their merit. So if you have a, a, a child who, who, or someone who wants to ride on this and he's denied admission to the school, I think that case will still have to go to courts and then an, another judge will decide on whether that grounds is enough for the child to be denied admission or not. As the debate rages, one wonders which group could be next to test the law for inclusion and representation.